Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. Uh, today I want to give you some close-up views of what is called a Con Virtuoso Deluxe saxophone. Um, this was a finish that was their highest end finish and it is gold plated, uh, hand burnished, meaning that it is actually, you take like a thing called a burnisher. Um, let's see if I got one. This is a very crude version. But you take something called a burnisher, which is basically a highly polished flat piece of steel, and you rub something until it gets completely smooth. Um, so rather than polishing it, which is an abrasive process, burnishing is simply rubbing something smooth. And you can make a couple rubs, and then you have to polish the burnisher to make it completely flat again, and you rub it again. And you would have to do this in, you know, all the little nooks and crannies, and it's a way to put a very thick layer of gold plate down, but it is extremely time consuming. Um, and it also has pearl inlay on all the keys. Now I'm not giving you a far away view of this because what's really special about this saxophone is the stuff that you can see close up. This is a Con New Wonder Series 2 Soprano, that is the Virtuoso Deluxe Finish. So if you want to learn about the saxophone itself, you can go ahead and just watch my Con New Wonder Series 2 video that I made a long time ago. And if you'd like to see some photos, uh, high resolution photos of the entire horn, I provided a link in the description of this video to a bunch of them on my website. But I figured you might like to see uh, a video of these up close because, you know, it's kind of hard to get a photo of the whole thing since it's round, you know, you only get little bits at a time. And I figured you guys might like to see what this looks like uh, in person. Um, so the Virtuoso Deluxe was their super high-end finish, and it could be applied to any saxophone from around like 47,000 serial number up to like 220,000 serial number, I think, maybe a little later. Uh, but it's extremely rare. I've only seen one other one of these. Uh, there's a good number of pictures online, though, because they are so, uh, you know, unique and they stand out so much that people tend to take photos of them when they've got them. Um, this was this finished option was twice as expensive as the usually seen highest option, the Artist's Special, uh, which would have been gold-plated and heavily engraved, but not burnished all over. Uh, and you can see this has some special engraving on it here of uh, a dragon being slain. And you see lots of like mythical motifs on old cons. One of the ones you see very often is called Leda and the Swan, L-E-D-A and the Swan. I'm sure if I knew my mythology better, this is probably a particular thing. I mean, that guy looks like he's young, so maybe this is a young... Is it Hercules and the Serpent? Maybe? Um, but I'm not too up on my myths. And it might be difficult to see, but the dragon and the dragon slayer have been silver, uh, highlighted in silver. So you've got, usually, you know, your base metal is brass, and then there's a copper flash, and then you silver plate it, and then you gold plate it. And then it looks like on top of the gold, they did a little bit of silver. But isn't that just amazing? Let's see if it'll focus up close. Yeah. Look at that engraving. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, the engraving probably would have been done by one of the Stenberg brothers, um, Julius... Uh, and Charles Stenberg, I believe. And if you look up Stenberg, S-T-E-N-B-E-R-G, you can see a bit more about them. They were Kahn's engravers for an incredibly long time. They worked at Kahn. Uh, they also moonlighted for some other stuff, but they are some of the best-known uh, engravers of musical instruments in the United States. And you can see there's an awful lot of straight cuts. So wiggle cuts are the ones that you see here, where the tool wiggles back and forth. Uh, straight cuts is more like what you see on jewelry uh, and, you know, like sterling silver, where a cutter called, I think, an anglet uh, is just pushed through the metal versus the wiggle cut, it's kind of walked along. And the wiggle cut's a little easier to do well than the straight cuts uh, and also much less time consuming. So most musical instrument engraving you see is a wiggle cut engraving, whereas uh, straight cuts denote something that had a bit more time taken to it. So you've got beautiful engraving, you've got, you know, traditional sort of wiggle cut engraving, and you've got a lot of straight cuts mixed in. Um, and this pearl inlay is pretty interesting. Uh, when you see this stuff, uh, especially up next to a king, which, you know what, I actually have one. Let me go ahead and show you the difference. 
when you see that engraving, uh, or when you see that the way those pearls are done compared to like a King Zephyr Special or Super 20, uh, the Zephyr Special and Super 20, um, they were standardized, they were the, the cuts out of the keys to make room for the pearls were done by machine, and the pearls themselves, if you ever needed to, I mean you, you can't find them anymore, but back then would have been interchangeable from one horn to the next. Um, so if you look at the pearls, this is on a King Zephyr Special, uh, you can see that you've got much sharper angles um, and everything looks much more like sort of standardized um, and you know clean uh, and these are actually removable, there's screws in the back there and if you, I actually have a video that shows what that looks like and again that's not something that you should really be doing to your horn but they are removable on kings whereas on these horns you see the pearls on the key cups what you're used to seeing is that you've got that edge that's kind of peened over uh, that holds the pearl in place and even on the pearls that are on the extra touch pieces here, it looks like they did the same thing. They took a regular key and then machined it out and then made those pearl pieces uh, and peened the edges over. Um, which would have been much more time consuming than I think if they had, you know, had specialized tooling that did this stuff repeatedly. But these horns, I would bet were ordered so infrequently that it was more economical to just do it by hand whenever someone ordered one uh, than it would have been to create specialized tooling for it. Um, like I said, I've only ever seen one other of these in person, although I'd imagine that there's you know several dozen in existence. And as far as how the horn plays, you know, compared to like a normal uh, Con New Wonder Series 2, I mean it's a it's a very very good Con New Wonder Series 2, but I don't think that there's anything you know, special about the bore or anything like that that I can tell. I mean, it plays like a Con New Wonder Series 2, which is to say, really beautiful, warm, round, uh, powerful sound, um, fairly well in tune. You know, you've got to do a bit of voicing yourself. It's very flexible, but, uh, you know, all in all, a really, really nice horn. So, there you have it. There is a Con Virtuoso Deluxe soprano saxophone, something you don't see super often. Made by C.G. Khan in Elkhart, Indiana in 1926. Oh, and look, there's me and my cheap camera setup. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. I hope you found this helpful, useful, and informative. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to get in touch via the comments section. You can find me on my website, where I actually have a phone number up, so you can call me if you've got any questions I can help you with. I love talking about saxophones, and I love helping people find the saxophone that's best for them, you know, help, their sa help them fix their saxophone problems, um, and that's why I do these videos, so I hope it's helpful.